Welcome, Hoosier fans, to another victorious episode of the Assembly Call, as today your Indiana Hoosiers knock off the Ohio State Buckeyes at a raucous Simon Scott Assembly Hall, 66-54. to The win moves the Hoosiers to 13-3 and on the season, 3-2 and in Big Ten play, and absolutely answered so many of the questions that we had about this team coming out of the Northwestern game. Indiana started out the game well. They opened up the second half well, and they closed well today en route to this victory, a full team effort by the Hoosiers, and we're going to break it all down for you here on this edition of the Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. I'm your host, Jared Morris. I'm here with Ryan Phillips, Uh, and let's start this show the way that we start every show, and that is with our banner moment. And for today's banner moment, I'm going to go back to the 10-minute mark of the game, Ohio State, a 10-minute mark in the second half. And Ohio State at this point actually led 45-44. to Indiana had started out pretty well in the second half, hit the skids a little bit. The Buckeyes went on a little run, took the lead, and down on the Ohio State end of the court, DJ Carton shot an air ball. And what happened next to me really signaled what was about to come, which was Devontae Green sprinted in transition out ahead of everybody. And he had had a really lackluster first half, as did all of Indiana's upperclassmen, really, in terms of Al Durham and Justin Smith. But when I saw him just sprint, it showed me a guy who was more engaged. And Rob Finnessy actually got the ball. He got it up to Devontae. Instead of forcing it, he immediately got the ball inside. Nothing was there. They got it back to him at the top of the key. And again, instead of chucking up a quick shot, he was patient. He drove in, got fouled, hit that nice little scoop shot. 46-45 Indiana It was one of those plays where it's kind of like ball don't lie. You know, his hustle was rewarded. That ball went in. I don't believe he made the free throw. But that bucket put Indiana up 46-45. to They would not relinquish the lead again. And it was just indicative of what happened in the second half, where, you know, after Indiana was down three in the first half and had played pretty well, but, you know, they kind of had to grind their way to just be down three because they had that long stretch in the first half where they didn't score. And a big reason why they didn't score is because guys they count on, Al Durham, Devontae Green, Justin Smith, just couldn't get anything going. Between the three of them, they had four points in the first half. Al had to sit with with two fouls. Justin couldn't get anything going. Devontae was not looking a whole lot different, frankly, than the way that he played against Northwestern. But in the second half, the upperclassmen stepped up. I believe they had 22 points between them. Uh, It was at least that. And, and, you know, in a first half where some of the young guys stepped up in the Big Ten to beat good teams, you've got to rely on your guys who have been in those moments before. And I thought Devontae, Al, and Justin stepped up their play much more than the first half, and no one more than Devontae Green, who was benched in that Northwestern game. A lot of conversation about him. What is his role going to be moving forward for the third straight season after a clear, obvious benching? Devontae responded by playing very well and being a really big part of a big win for Indiana. So it's Devontae. Things can change on a game-by-game basis, but for today, he really responded to that benching, played a huge, huge role in the second half. I tip my cap to him for bouncing back, and he was a big reason why Indiana was able to get this victory today. All right, our banner moment, as always, brought to you by our friends at Home Field Apparel, a company that was founded by an IU grad that remains based in Indianapolis, and they are as fully bought into IU athletics as an apparel company is going to be. Obviously, they've got like 60 other teams that are on their website now, but they are Hoosiers first and foremost. We know that. They travel down to the Gator Bowl to support the team. They came up with that nine Windiana uh, you know, shirt before the season, seemingly uh, setting some positive momentum for this Indiana football program. And if you're looking for comfortable, unique IU gear, that's the place that you've got to go. The t-shirts, the long sleeve tees, the crew necks, the hoodies, they are so comfortable. They just envelop your body in wonderful goodness. It's the perfect clothing to have for the winter when you're watching this Indiana basketball team and as you start thinking about next football season too. So many great unique logos that you can't find anywhere else. And because you are an Assembly Call listener, you get 20% off your order when you go there. So go to homefieldapparel.com, check out everything that they have to offer, and use the promo code ASSEMBLY20 to get 20% off your entire order. That's ASSEMBLY20 at homefieldapparel.com today. Get the most unique and comfortable IU apparel anywhere. All right, well, it is time to move the ball, find the open man, and get some opening thoughts from the rest of our team. It is a two-man crew today. Ryan Phillips, over to you. What do you have to rant about today? You know, I, I know we're going to talk about the offense, and, and it got bogged down at times big time, you know, going 10 minutes without a field goal at one point, but at least 
during that stretch, they were, they found ways to get to the free throw line, which has not been the case in these runs previously. You can miss field goals and not, you know, a field goal drought isn't that important if you're still scoring, if you're still finding ways to score at the free throw line. Um, so it was a little different today than we've seen in those other droughts. Yeah, they did have, I think it was a 10-1 or 12-1 run at one point against them. And you're thinking, oh, here we go again. But to their credit, defensively, they, they I mean, we're going to talk about the offense, but the defense is what, we should be talking about today. They held Ohio State to 54 points. Caleb Wesson, three of 11 from the field, 11 points. Uh, he did have 10 rebounds, but that guy's going to do that to you. Uh, uh, but, but you know, the ability to hold him to three of 11 from the field, a lot of great defense on him from Joey Brunk deserves a ton of credit defensively. And I've been on Joey defensively. This was the one matchup where it's like, all right, this could be a good matchup for Joey. Um, you know, Wesson really didn't hurt Indiana from three as much as, as he probably could have, uh, because of, you know, Bronco over helps a lot and probably had some opportunities for three, but got to give a guy, Deron Davis deserves a lot of credit. He played 11 minutes today and it was a, his, his best showing of the season easily and played very well defensively. I mean, it's not going to be perfect with Deron, but you know, on a sliding scale, he played very well today. He also made some great passes on the interior. Um, to find guys, he hit Jerome Hunter a couple times on cuts. Got Jerome to the line. He didn't, you know, an assist doesn't show up in the box score, but that's a really great pass that leads to points. But defensively, I was really impressed with Indiana. I thought they closed out to the three really well. Yeah, some guys got loose for some. That's going to happen. This is the Big Ten. The other team is running plays specifically designed to get guys open. You're gonna, they're going to get open occasionally. But I thought specifically the defense today really did what Archie Miller wanted. Guys were helping well. Guys were rotating well, uh, getting to the to the spots. And, you know, I know it's not the stats segment, Jared, but they held Ohio State to 16 points in the paint all day. That is incredibly impressive against an Ohio State team that has guys who can kill you in the paint. And they they did a great job keeping them, first and foremost, you know, they, they got out rebound at 36 to 35. So it's basically a dead heat right there in rebounds, but to keep them from second chance points, to keep them from points in the paint, that is a great job by Indiana defensively. And they forced Ohio state to take 26 threes. So they were really defending. Well, even in the bad stretches offensively, if you defend, you find ways to get to the free throw line, you can limit those bad stretches. And that's what they haven't done previously. When they've gone bad on offense, things have gotten bad on defense, and they haven't found ways to get to the free throw line in those, you know, in those past four or five games where they've gone into those lulls. Today they did that. And again, if you can go to the, if you if you're if you're facing an 8-0 stretch and you can't get a good shot, but you can get to the free throw line, that makes it an 8-1-8-2 stretch. You know, that breaks up that long run, maybe changes the momentum a little, gets you feeling a little better about yourself. Somebody steps up, makes free throws. Maybe now they feel better about their shot. It's it's about finding ways to stem those tides and not just sit there and, and take it. And and so I thought the Indiana did a much better job of that today. Also, only 11 turnovers. Seven of them came in the second half. And they had a really clean first half, actually, shockingly, considering, you know, those uh, the, the run they had against them. But... I, I really thought this was a better, cleaner game from Indiana. Forced DJ Carton into seven turnovers also. So great job by the guards playing defense and, and not getting beats. I just thought it was a great performance from everybody. If you notice, they shortened the bench by one player. Devon, uh, Demisi didn't play. So uh, maybe guys were he was sick. a little more. Yeah, I know what I'm saying. Yeah. The short, the, you know, it, it's it's a it's a it's a tighter rotation by one player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ray, you know, Ray Thompson only got five minutes, but um, you know, Jerome Hunter played longer as a result. So, um, you know, I, I think that that it's that that guys got in a better rhythm today, and I thought that showed for sure. Comment from Justin in the chat: Ryan Phillips' only job is to get pissed. It's weird seeing him content. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> hey, it's amazing when the team actually plays hey, that, well. What, like no, no, no. this, go. I was just going to say, it's not my job to get pissed. It's my job to rant. I can rant positively. Right. Well, um, and it's your it's your job to give an honest assessment. And frankly, yeah. this team has gone four and three in the last seven games without playing good basketball. Today, they played good basketball. For the majority of stretches. this game. Yeah, well, okay. But I mean, majority of the for game. the majority, the majority of this of game, game this looked and felt like Indiana basketball. You know, yes, they did have the stretch in the first half, the last 10 minutes where they couldn't get a field goal and they went away some from going inside. But, you know, you hit it. They were able to grind because they got to the free throw line and they would at least get one point here and a point there. And the defense kept them in it, you know, and, and they didn't allow that run to balloon too much. And they came right out in the second half and went on an 8-0 run to reestablish things. And that's what I want to talk about right now 
which is, you know, it's easy to to kind of look at the end of this game and say, hey, you know, Indiana finished and they won by 12. Well, the most important thing today is the way Indiana started because they came out at the beginning of the first half, 15 to 10 at the first TV timeout, right? A, you know, plus five with Rob, Rob Finnessy starting. In the second half, they go on an 8-0 run with Rob Finnessy starting. That right there is your 13-point advantage. And so they basically nursed that advantage for the other you know, 32 minutes of the game. And so I think that move to put Rob Finnessy into the starting lineup, let Devontae Green come off the bench, you know, not only did Devontae not deserve to start, you know, based on how he had played, he's a guy that just seems better suited to coming in off of the bench. And so hopefully this is a change that we see moving forward. But, you know, let's talk a little bit about Rob because, you know, he was outstanding early. I mean, he really set a big tone. He made made three pointers. Playing great. Yeah. And look, it is no coincidence that Indiana beat the 11th ranked team in the country by 12 when the guards play like this. You know, mm-hmm. Devontae scores 19. Rob has 13. Al was a non-factor in the first half, but played better in the second half. Yeah, yeah. Indiana's to, guards. To, to, be fair, to be fair to Al, I thought he came out with good energy, but picked up two early fouls, had to go out, didn't do much in the first half as a result. He came back in, but he wasn't, you know, in yeah. rhythm. So I, I think that we can't be too harsh on Al's performance because his stat line doesn't look great, but I thought he provided a lot of energy in the second he, half. He definitely did in the second half. And that, that's what I mean. Like, the the... A game is going to look different when you have guards that are productive and contributing. And Indiana just outplayed Ohio State's guards today, you know, and that's that's a credit to those guys um, for being able to do that. You know, Rob Finnessy uh, only had the one assist, but two big numbers, seven rebounds. He was really active as a rebounder, yep. you know, and that's one and of he, those he, where he cleaned up. He cleaned up a lot of good blockouts by the post. That's exactly that's exactly sometimes, what I was going to say. Sometimes you get a good blockout, you're not going to be able to get the rebound because you're not jumping up for the rebound. You're holding right. the other guy off. It's on the guards to swoop in. Was, uh, and Tom Crean used to be really big on on guard rebounds too. That means that you're blocking out well. If your guards are able to run free and grab a rebound, and, and Rob Finnessy showed that last year too. He's a good rebounder. Yep, and he had four steals too. So I mean, he his impact One was turnover. felt today. And I thought, you know, defensively, I thought Indiana really came out, you know, early on and was playing pretty good defense. And he keyed it because he is obviously Indiana's best at controlling dribblers. When Indiana's defense got really leaky in the first half, it's when he got tired. And you know, Devonte, frankly, you know. To me, there was a big difference between second half Devontae and first half Devontae. His defense wasn't very good. He was pretty passive uh, offensively, but then would take bad shots. And so, you know, when Rob got tired, it, no one else really stepped up. In the second half, guys did because, you know, Rob was, yeah. uh, you know, he obviously looked hurt, you know, even more. And, you know, he was able to, you know, stay in the game and, and kind of come back in. But, you know, that so important to just have good guard play and yeah. they don't have to be even average guard play yeah and but you so bad you, you've got you know indiana has a good advantage in the post today they didn't need their post guys to score as much no but i thought defensively trace and joey were outstanding Played great um but the guards are going to have to at least battle the opposition to a draw today they outplayed them and you win by 12 you know but you've got to at least battle the opposing guards to a draw and give your big guys a chance to win the game guys. for you yeah. that's the formula and today we saw much more of it. So, you know, I thought this team looked like a more cohesive team. They look, they, they just looked like a well-coached together unit today, which is all that we've been there asking was, for. You know what there was today? There was a sense of purpose. There yes. was, a, there yes. was, there was some kind like there was a, it felt like whatever the plan was, was being executed. And even when the offense wasn't going well and they weren't getting good shots, they were still running stuff. You still, still saw guys cut hard. You, you, you know, it it wasn't resulting in made shots and they weren't getting great shots. Part of it was because they couldn't get into the post because Ohio State was overplaying and playing pretty good defense uh, positionally in the post. So sometimes I, I am in favor of just kind of trying to force the ball in there. You know, just give it to Trace Jackson Davis, even if it's a tight window. I don't care if you turn it over. And, you know, on, a, on an attempt to pass it to the post, if you're not getting anything else offensively, I really don't. I don't I mean, I don't love turnovers, but that's a, a situation where it's like, hey, try and jam it in there once or twice. See what happens. And maybe try you get- to reposition yourself to get a better angle. We're yeah. so passive if the initial angle yeah. isn't there, you know. Yeah. So I, I agree because there, there were a couple possessions in the second half where Trace got a little frustrated. Like, dude, throw me the ball, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So yeah, he was real frustrated. He yeah, was. You know, it's also it could have been a showcase performance for him against a guy like Wesson or or any of their post guys. You know, he, he, it's, it's a chance. You know, he's a competitive guy. We've seen that out of Trace at times. He's like, hey, I want to I want to, you know, 
get you know get involved and 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 work and i thought he was great defensively and i thought I his positioning on offense was really good he just wasn't able to get the ball as, as much as we would have liked him to I yeah think. his numbers don't look his as passing, good today by the way his passing out of the post was much better today yes. as well yeah i mean you know his numbers don't look great 6 points 3 boards 2 assists you know 2 blocks of steal that's not great but he, I thought he played a lot better than the numbers. Agreed. You know, it, just his impact. I thought early in the second half, I thought the two weak side blocks that he had were really mm-hmm. big. Well, um, and his and, threat, and big in momentum the post, changers for Indiana. Yeah, over the last couple of games, I mean, he's he's still blocking shots, but he, the threat of him almost hasn't been in the minds of opposing players. Today it was. When guys drove in, they were, you know, altering their shots because they knew Trace was there. You had some other guys get some blocks too today, or at least alter shots. It was it was great. I mean, Rob had one. Joey was altering shots. I mean, it was the the defense was aggressive and and you know focused today, and and they didn't let a lot by them. Yeah, um, let's talk real quick about Jerome Hunter, um, yeah. who I thought really played well and, and best game as Hoosier. I, I agree. Uh, he's had more productive games, but given who this you're playing, the context, this was definitely his best game. You know, what I liked about it twofold. Number one is his play, and number two is the fact that Archie rolled with him in the second half. You know, he saw minutes. in the first half. Look, in the first half, you know, that first half was really kind of the final 10 minutes were really kind of held together with duct tape, with basically Joey Brunk's hustle and, you know, Jerome Hunter being active and Race Thompson playing good post defense like Indiana really relied on some of those newer guys to keep it together until the older guys came back and Jerome was a big part of that you know on a day when Indiana only shoots 20 of 36 from the line he was five of six from the free throw line yep shot great too what I liked about it you know he took that one three-pointer early in transition I don't really have a big problem with that he shot because it, it was, was in the flow. Hit. Yeah, like I'm, I'm it fine. It was online with that. too. And he it was, was confident. A good shot, just didn't go down. I'm, you know, in transition. Okay, take that shot because that's a pretty good look. But what I liked is we've noticed him in recent games just settling and hunting shots. And today he was a cutter. Today he got the ball in the post once. You know, he was active, and that's, you know, that to me is the thing with him: cut, screen. You know, be hard to guard, and if you do that, the shots are going to come. He'll be able to yeah. find shots, and eventually they'll start going in. But today he found a way to be productive, and I thought defensively he continued his improvement in that area. Much you better. know, so this was, you know, look, I I still think a big breakout is coming for him point wise. Like I think there's going to be a fifteen to twenty point explosion because once he does make one and that confidence gets rolling, he's going to be calling for the ball and he'll go off. And t- today to me was kind of a step toward that. You know, and I think yeah, you no, saw a guy who was thinking the, the game a little bit better. And today. he stepped to the free throw line. His free throw form looks as good as anybody on the team. I mean, he he really just stepped in confidently uh, to make those. And and you're right. All of those baskets came off of hard work. I mean, whether it was he, he twice, he dumped it into the paint and made a hard cut, was wide open, got the ball. And as soon as he caught it, like four guys rushed to him. He went up and got fouled. Uh, didn't make the layup. I mean, or, or you know, it was kind of like a little jump yeah. hook in the lane. Both times they got fouled both times. But the the fact that a guy who has, you know, never really had success at the college level is willing to attack against a good team like Ohio State, that bodes well for the future. It's like, man, the opportunity to, for playing time is there. It's it's right there. Go get it. And yeah, and he, he really took a step forward today. And defensively, I thought he was really good. And he's so he's got such great length and size and athletic ability. He can guard the wing, but he's got length and size. So guys can't just drive by him or 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 take feel confident taking shots because of his size. Um, but I thought also you're right. He had that one post up where he just snuck into the post and and tried to post up and he clearly was getting undercut and fouled. But he still went up instead of instead of wilting away and, and getting rid of the ball, he confidently turned and he kind of fumbled the ball, caught it, and then he decided, no, I'm going up. And he turned and went up with it strong and and earned the foul. And that's Again, just a lot of, like you're looking for progression. I thought I only he only played five minutes, but I thought Reese Thompson looked good today when he was in there defensively. He was rotating well. Drained to three. <laughs> he drained. Yeah, there you go. He's wide open and he nailed it. Um, we saw him do that in high school. He can do it. it you know, he's just got to get the time on the court. Again, with a deep rotation, it's harder to find, you know, the younger guys more time. But um, I thought that also on an offensive rebound, it, he went up, he didn't get the rebound, but he caused Ohio State to knock the ball out of bounds. Yeah. Gave Indiana a new possession. I mean, 
you you want to see these positive steps forward from guys. And and yeah, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to get beat on defense. You're going to, you know, overplay something and a guy's going to cut you back door easy or you're going to miss your rotation. That's going to happen when you're new at this, you know, and and you're yeah. I mean, it's not like you know what the offense is going to do and and they're not trying to beat you. They're working on beating you too and you're they're going to beat you from time to time. So getting hung up, hung up on and getting beaten once or twice isn't isn't good. What you've got to do is learn from those mistakes and make sure they don't happen again. And I thought Jerome really looked good today. I thought race showed out well today. And, and I thought that, um, that you're right about fantasy and green. It's just like, as long as you can get solid play from the perimeter. Yeah. Then, I mean, imagine a team that doesn't have the inside presence and size that Ohio state does. Imagine what you can do then, you know, if you just get a little bit of production from the outside and you let your bigs go nuts it, it, this can be a good team. We've been saying it for a while. The potential's there. They just have to want it. That's why people have, have been frustrated, you know, because like, yeah, you see it potential. If they were just bad, like, nobody would care. Right. And no. and it's just, you know, here's the other thing. It's uh, Indiana six of 12 from three today. I know that's 50%. So it's a higher percentage, but I'm saying you make six threes. This team make six threes. You're going to win a lot more games than you, than, than you that's look huge. like you've been winning, you know, because we've been hitting one, two, you know, maybe, we got rid of a lot of the capricious shot selection yep. today. You know, like that's the thing. There were even in the bad stretch, they were not taking yes. those bad out of nowhere threes from the corner. I mean, Justin Smith took two today, and I wanted to wring his neck because I didn't think any of either was a great shot. But you know, it, it's I'm okay with two of those as opposed to five. Yes. you know, I mean, there's that that's three more possessions you're wasting with bad shots. And and you yeah. save those possessions and you work the ball around and you try and score. It's different. Yep. All right. Let's take a break here. Uh, coming up, we're going to continue our breakdown of Indiana's 12-point victory over Ohio State. I will point out a couple of today's meaningful moments that you might have missed. And then we will go inside the numbers, even though Ryan kind of already did that, to highlight the most important statistical notes from the game. You are listening to a victorious episode of the Assembly Call. Stick with us. This is Verdell Jones. What's better than an epic buzzer beater? A full court dribble and a perfectly placed pass to set it all up. And of course, celebrating with Hoosier Nation afterwards. So join Jared, Andy, Ryan, and Coach on the assembly call after every IU basketball game. Go Hoosiers. Thank you, Verdell. You are listening to the Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. I am Jared Morris. I'm here with Ryan Phillips, and we are breaking down Indiana's victory over Ohio State on Saturday afternoon at Simon Scott Assembly Hall. Ryan, it is time for uh, today's meaningful moments that you might have missed. And for the first one, I want to go back to the first half and to that bad stretch that Indiana had. You know, when Ohio State turned a a nine-point Indiana lead into a five-point Ohio State lead. And, you know, I kind of wrote in my notes, okay, it's time now for a leader to step up. Like, who is going to step up and say, we're not doing this again? You know, this it's a it was a twelve one run or 30, you know whatever it is. It's like, hey, this is not going to get to twenty to one or you know some of these really bad runs that we've seen. And I thought one great example of this, and it's just so indicative of the impact that this guy has had, is Joey Brunk. He battled so hard on on a, a one defensive possession to get position with Caleb Wesson. I don't know if he actually got the steal, but he basically knocked the ball away twice. And it was just, it was smart positioning. It was hustle. It was just a guy who seemed determined to make a play. And then right after that, he goes down, they get him the ball inside. He gets fouled. Now, I think he only made one of the two free throws, but still it was like, hey, here's a point. And sometimes yeah. when you're going bad, just getting a point but it was that's what i thought was better today when things went bad is things weren't as bad because guys made a little play it didn't just totally snowball and so you know again joey brunk his numbers aren't going to jump out but his post defense was great and he was just a All guy game. who played tough and played hard and so you can live with you know some of the limitations he has because he can be that guy that when things are going bad, basically puts up a boundary and says, it's not going to get any worse. Indiana needs that. They got it today. And I think it's a big reason why they got that first half back under control to where it didn't snowball. And those little plays like that really make a big difference. Yeah, I got one. 
Uh, fourteen oh six left. You and Andy always. Take Jeez, and you've even got the timestamp. You are 14, like fourteen oh six left in the first half. Uh, Indiana up fifteen thirteen, but Ohio State was kind of kind of you know coming back. And uh, Ray Thompson made a three pointer and <laughs> stared down Ohio State's bench and told him to shut up. I want some attitude on this team. I, agree. I mean, like, is that when Andy texted overs? to put your pants back on? <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it's not even that it was race. It was just that it was somebody kind of talking back. Like, don't get pushed around. Yeah. Like, you know, don't let them influence you with their chatter or whatever. Tell them to make a three in their face and tell them to shut up. I, I, I thought that was, I thought that was great. And you need it, some it, attitude. It, and the whole team had attitude today. Now, I don't know what was being said on the court or anything like that. But the whole team seemed to have attitude today. It seemed to have that we're not going to lose attitude and we're going to play better. And we're going to be focused and we're going to, you know, attack and we're going to, you know, not take what this team is is forcing us to take. And I thought that was just indicative of it. And we've we've been told that there was a, a real tough practice after the last game. And that clearly translated to the court. These guys need to get tougher. They need to have some attitude, some personality. And, and I thought that was sort of indicative of, OK, OK. Let's yeah, yeah, let's push it back. It was like I think it was last year where there was a game where Romeo Langford got fouled really hard and Deron Davis, Davis got in got in the guy's face and said something. It's like we need more of that. Defend your teammate, you know, yeah. like step up. And um I, I just thought that was indicative of the way the team played today. Yeah, you know, I wanna I meant to mention this when we were talking about Jerome, but again, it's you know, it's kind of one of these things. You want attitude and you also want Guys who look like they're having fun, you know, guys who provide energy that their teammates can feed off of. One thing that you notice about Jerome when he plays is he smiles when he's out there. Like he'll make a play, yeah. he kind of smiles, he kind of starts nodding his head a little bit, yep. like "Let's go." That stuff, you know, on a and it normally it's to other players. And normally I wouldn't make a big deal about it, but this is a week where you know a picture circulated of Devonte Green and Deron Davis just sitting on the bench, and a lot was made about body language, and rightfully so because it matters. If you haven't seen Gino Oriema's you know two and a half minute kind of treatise on the importance of body language, you should go seek it out sometime because it's great. And he talks about why he actually has assistant coaches study the body language of the players on the bench, you know, and so. Devontae, Duran, other guys didn't have it the last game. They had it today. You know, there were clips of Duran on the bench, you know, kind of smiling and getting going. And yeah, he was the it's first easier one to, to jump do. up on some of those threes. Yeah. And, yeah. and you can say, well, it's easier to do when you're winning. Well, maybe you're winning because guys bring that attitude to the floor. And so there's I a think general that stuff energy. Matters. There's a general energy around a team heading into a game or during a game. And that can yeah. lift or bring down players. And it can, it can just, I mean, huddles can, can, can change the, the dynamic of the game if there's a positive vibe in it. You know, I mean, it's, you feel more confident when your teammates are confident. You know, yeah. and it's, it, it is, it's absolutely contagious. And there's so many things on the, on the team that are on a team that are contagious, including free throw shooting. Man, you know, it's funny because the team clearly brought a different attitude. I kind of felt like the fans brought a different attitude. Like I was, I, I think I texted you guys this, like I was weirdly optimistic for this game and I haven't been optimistic for basically any of our recent and you're games. Mr. Optimism. And I'm Mr. Optimism, but I don't fake it. Like, uh, you know, but I think there was something about the way Archie handled the post game where it was like, okay, look, enough's enough. Like, we can't do this anymore. And yeah, some people rolled their eyes because it's like, okay, here we are again. Yeah. You know, we were here last year. But there was something about what he said and the way he said it that kind of made you feel like, okay, maybe it'll be... There was a different vibe. Maybe it'll yeah. be here. And that gave me some confidence. And it seemed to change the team's attitude. And it felt like the fans from the opening tip were in less of a prove-it mode and more of a let's-do-it-together mode. You know? And, and you see The crowd that. was great. So well, we should and, really you know, thank and, the Hoosiers Sarek's We should. For yeah, for pumping everybody up. Pumping you know, everybody but, up. You know, you see that sometimes when a when a fan base I think is struggling with their team because they don't believe in them. You know, you maybe you're up at the beginning of the game, but you're kind of waiting a little bit to have something to cheer for. When you see a team and a fan base that are more in sync, it's like, hey, let's just go together. We trust you. We're ready yep. to roll from the tip. And that's what it felt like today, which is why it felt like Indiana basketball because there's just been such a disconnect. And I know, you know, that stuff is kind of ambiguous but I think you all know what I mean. And like, it just felt right today. Um, one other meaningful moment that I want, and, and look, it could just be a one game blip. Like if we know, if we've learned anything yeah. about this As program, always, how and this, this group carry of players, into the next game? yes, yeah. I'm not saying it's a major turning point, but it could be, you know, and it's, it's something to build on. And look, now it'll just be, can playing. they build on it? 
and Ohio State isn't playing well. They need to build on this. Like, you know, it's not like Ohio State is is murdering the rest of the Big Ten. They're not playing well. They're one and, and four. They're, <laughs> yeah, they're not getting results despite yeah. their talent level. They're not getting results. So, you know, this also is sort of like a hey, yeah, this is it's good we won, but we should have felt like at home we should have won given the way yes. they played. So you know, it's it's about moving on and building on this. And it's always about that in the middle of a season, whether it's football, basketball, baseball, whatever. It's not about the game you win. It's about how does that translate? How does what happen? If you lose, what'd you learn? How do you improve? If you win, how do you build on it? It's always about the next game. And, it, it, you know, the minute the buzzer sounds, yeah, enjoy it for about 30 seconds. But then how do you improve on what you did today? And, and um, that has to be the message going forward is, yeah, this was a nice win. Let's keep going. Yes. You know, and, and let's keep building. Yeah. Uh, one other meaningful moment that I want to talk about is Al Durham in the second half. You know, again, he only had three points, but I thought the one bucket was an important one. And I hope the coaches show him this film over and over. Because if you'll recall, it's that play where he drove on the left side and kind of made that little, you know, that, that kind of little runner that we've seen him do. And what was different about it is Al drove to score and to shoot. He didn't drive to get fouled. Yep. And didn't, one did, he thing didn't we, assume the foul. And by the right. way, he did get fouled on that drive. He did. Well, and you know, one thing that we've noticed about him, and we saw this early in his freshman year, he's a good finisher. And he can yep. finish with either hand. Great with and, angles, just like fantasy. He's great with angles. Yeah, and, and he's, yeah. you know, look, this is the type of matchup that he has shied away from at times. I thought he did a little bit in his short stint in the first half, but I thought he came back in the second half with a different mentality. And it was he had really a couple important. turnovers. He had a couple turnovers he has to clean up, but they were both two yes. of them were turnovers where he was passing into the post yeah. and lost it. And it's like, all right, I'm fine with that. You know, you're trying yeah. to, to get the ball to your best player. Like it's or 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 one of your big men in a position to score. I'm fine with that. The yeah. turnovers I'm not okay with are and there was one pass where Jerome sent it to him and he wasn't looking and it went through his hands. And it's like that's a boneheaded play, but at the same time, it's not, you know, trying to dribble through your legs and getting it stolen for a, for a, for a layup. You know what I mean? Like there are different levels of turnovers and and I just felt like his turnovers came from in a lot of, in most cases came from trying to make something happen and hustle as opposed to just, you know, I'd rather have a turnover from hustle than a bad shot. You know what I mean? Like Archie has said the exact same thing. (laughs) And and I I think it's it's, true. I think it's, I think it's true. It's absolutely true. Um, so I think, yeah, I, I just I didn't have a problem with this game today. His, his score, no. his line doesn't look great. He did miss three free throws, and he's our most reliable free throw yeah. shooter. And to Some be frank, just, like he needs to be better. Like, yeah, you absolutely. know, we have to be able to get more from him in a game like this than that. Fortunately, Rob and Devonte played well Stepped enough that up. we can gloss over a little bit of it. But it, he he at his least bounced back. Was really yeah, good. He bounced back in the second half. But to the original point, I I hope he takes that mentality of. Drive to shoot, drive to score, and if you get fouled, awesome. But we've seen, like, it's like he tries to sell the foul so much that refs aren't going to give it to him, and it's like he has a reputation. I know he wants to get to the free throw line. He got there four times today, and that's really good. I think it's going to happen more if he just drives. Bring the contact on. I'm going to shoot the basketball. Um, well, he also made he does a cut. That, he'll be in a much also, better position. He also made a made a cut and ran into Caleb Wesson. Apparently, Al must weigh the same as a freight train because, and Caleb Wesson must be as light as a feather because he went. Caleb went tumbling down to the ground after bumping into Al. So, you know, I'm sure that was a legitimate foul call. Thoughts on the officiating today? It was horrible. <laughs> All game. It, it was, was so inconsistent. It was, they, they call a hand check and then a guy get mauled underneath. Either way, <laughs> yeah. we get mauled underneath. And it's like, no, nope, no foul. You know, I, I just, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm so done with Big Ten officiating. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. But, you know, Al, because of the foul trouble in the first half, only played 17 minutes. And then because late, Devontae, you know, took over and, and when Devonte gets hot, he does everything right. You know, he plays better defense. He doesn't take bad shots. He, you know, tries to drive and attack and look for his teammates. It doesn't throw no look bounce passes because guess what? When you're hot, the defense is going to suck up to you and the guy, you're not going to have to throw a no look bounce pass. The guy's going to be right there. You yeah. know, he just, he, it, when he gets in rhythm, He's so dangerous, and I just, you know, here's the thing. He scored 19 points today and was only plus four because he was so bad in the first half, and it's just when he's cold he and he's not hitting shots, it's, it's, it's really a disaster, but when he gets hot, he is as dangerous as anybody, and, and it's, it's almost like if you could just bottle that intensity of when he gets hot and have him play it the whole time, he'd be an all-Big Ten player. There's no question about it, yes. you know, but it's the lapses and the mistakes, and that's why I got like Al – 
you know, again, two games in a row in the second half during a lull, he provided the energy that this team needed. Whether it, it resulted in baskets, whether it resulted in uh, points on the board, whether it resulted in, you know, uh, uh, running the offense properly or anything, this team needed a little bit of energy during that second half of all. He provided it. Everybody else fed off it, and everybody else was the beneficiary. Last game, he was the beneficiary. He was driving, got to the line, and wound up making 11 of 12 free throws. This this game, everybody else was the beneficiary of that energy, and I think Joey Brunk was the same way. No matter what, Joey provided energy today. There were no lulls for him. We've seen lulls from him in the past. He's a big guy. It's hard to keep that energy up the whole game, but we really saw a lot of really good hustle out of Joey today and a lot of energy, and that, again, I've been, I've been dodgy on Joey all season, whether or not he should get as many minutes as he is. Today, he proved that he deserves those minutes. I mean, he was aggressive, and he was energetic all game and provided a spark all game. Uh, let's talk about numbers real quick. I think you know one of the most important ones is for as bad as Indiana's free throw shooting efficiency was, that last free throw going in gave Indiana 20 free throw makes. Ohio State only took 19. It is a very common yep. formula for winning. Make more free throws than your opponent shoot. Indiana did that today. Um, I mean, this could have been attacking. This could to, have been a, uh, I mean, a blowout if Indiana makes its free throws. Makes its free throws. Yeah. You know? No, so, they were aggressive and they attacked. They got to the line thirty six times. They did. I mean, that's yeah. Attack. Outside of You'll a few lows, I mean, they they were committed to getting the ball inside. And you know, one thing people talked like earlier or coming into this game, it's like, what does this Indiana team even hang its hat on? Well, the yep. one thing that's been pretty consistent is rebounding. That's the one thing that they've done pretty much every game. Yeah. Today, I thought was actually one of their. I'll say it was one of their least consistent rebounding performances. Yes. And Ohio State had something to do with that because they're a good rebounding team. But Archie called him out for it late in the second half. I think, you know, he's something like, Art, you know, we're not rebounding for crap. And, you know, we, yeah, they were, getting, they, we were only down, we were only high. down three or four rebounds at that point. But I thought th- for the, from that point on till the end of the game, we really cleaned it up and the rebounding yeah, was good and, and they were getting one shot and that's it. And we were turning it into transition opportunities the yeah. other way. And, that's something that we haven't always seen in some of these games. So that was big. So even though Indiana, you know, loses the rebounding margin by one, only gets eight offensive rebounds, you know, they turned it on late. They got to be better than this. Um, yeah, of course. But, you know, Ohio well, State's a good Ohio rebounding State, team, too. Ohio State has a stretch there before Archie said that where they got a couple offensive rebounds in a row and turn those into, you know, it turns into an extra possession. And I think they scored on a couple of them. And I think that's what he was motivated by. And Ohio State wound up with 10 offensive rebounds. Uh, and, and Indiana only wound up with eight. But at the same time, you felt like for a while, Indiana wasn't grabbing the ball. Like it was just kind of getting battered around and Ohio yeah. State would wind up with it. Sometimes it's just a bad bounce, you know, like a, a shot. There was one where the shot went off the top of the backboard and went sideways and wound up right in the hand of an Ohio State guy. There's nothing you can do about that. But when you're seeing it go off your guy's hand and bounce around and Ohio State's grabbing it, they're winning 50-50 balls. And, and Archie at one point said they're getting all the 50-50 balls. Like they're the ones getting the hustle. We need to hustle. And he, he, he pointed out to somebody, he's like, you got to dive on the floor there. You know, the ball was loose. You got to go get it, you know? And, um, and so he's right. And, and I thought that you're right that, that later in the second half, they really clamped down and you saw guys flying in for rebounds to grab them and everybody blocking somebody out and, you know, just getting to the ball and the ball is very valuable. You need to go get it when it's out there, you know, like yeah. it's just, you need to go grab it. Yes. Um, what other numbers do you got? Uh, the turnover number was important. Indiana only turned the ball over 11 times, which was really good. And, and Ohio State turned it over 16 times. And some of well, those, they, they yes, were, were, some of those were DJ Carton going a little bit too fast. But some of it was also just Indiana being active. Like our hands yeah. were active. Uh, you know, we, and we, you know, and then when there was a ball there that had been knocked away, we attacked it and went the other way. But and I'll tell you, I'll tell you the biggest travels. numbers. There were about five travels in Ohio State that could have been called as well that weren't. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you that the biggest number that jumps out to me, one of the biggest numbers anyway, is Caleb Wesson, one of seven on two-point field goals. You know, yep. look, he's a really good outside shooter, and you know when they went to that little pick-and-pop game and he's playing out there on the floor, he's going to be able to do things to Joey Bronk and Deron Davis. That's a tough cover for them. But when he, what makes him really dangerous is when he can score inside and outside and yep. be efficient. And then you, today, you have to focus we your totally took on. the inside away from him. Whether it was Joey, whether it was Duran, whether it was Race, they played tough and they played disciplined. You know, it was like they just they walled up and made him shoot over him, and it was a tough game for him. You know, he's a he's a really good player, so he's going to get his numbers. He had a double double, eleven points, ten rebounds. But I bet that's as well as anybody's going to defend him overall all season long. Yeah, you know, and when I just I thought those a, guys did a really nice job. 
And and one, remember, one of those shots was a goal. One of those makes was a goaltend that you don't know if it would have even gone in anyway. You know, I mean, it's so it's it's they really did a great job. His one two pointer that he made was a goaltend, and that was a that was a really good active play by Jerome I, I, too. I know? thought it was too. He was <laughs> like, a split second late. Yeah. I, I had no problem with that. Um, the numbers for me, uh, Indiana held Ohio State to thirty two point seven percent from the field. That's just great defense. It's great defense, and and. Uh, yeah. 31 bench points for Indiana versus 18 for Ohio State, and then 20 points in the paint for Indiana, which is low for Indiana, but Ohio State only had 16. And if, if Indiana scores 20 points in the paint in games, we're going to be in trouble. You know, if they average that, they're going to be in trouble, but they held Ohio State to 16. That means everything the opposing team's getting is difficult. We need a stat that isn't just points in the paint, but points where the ball touched the paint. Yeah. You know, because that's True. the thing is, is Indiana got a lot of points you know, where the ball went inside it. There was a one, one other, we didn't get to this in meaningful moments that you might've missed, but there was a possession in the, at the beginning of the second half that was just exquisite. They got the ball into trace Jackson Davis. He, he kind of took a couple of dribbles, made a little skip pass to Al Durham who quickly got it over to Justin Smith. And then Justin drove in. And one issue that Justin has had when he drives into the lane, which I like, you know, I like that he's been doing that yeah, more, I agree. but he gets tunnel vision. And he's either going to shoot or he's going to make kind of a pre-scripted pass, and it doesn't it's work easy out. To defend. But in, yeah. but in this case, you know, he drove, he drew the defense. Rob Finnessy really smartly dropped down to the corner. Justin found him. Rob drained the three. It was, I mean, that's what it should look like. You get the ball inside, trace with a great skip pass to reverse it. The defense is moving, and then you attack the defense to get the ball into the lane. And now, when you've rotation. got shooters who can move and then shoot the ball off of a pass, look. You know, Archie took some crap for saying, you know, it's BS that we don't have guys who can make shots, you know, and I took some crap because I retweeted it and said he's right about this and it's fine. Like the numbers don't back that up and we are not a good shooting team. I get it. But I'll tell you what, there with are guys, guys like Rob, with guys like Al, when the offense creates a good shot off of a good pass, we can make shots. And I, to me, that's what Archie was saying. And Ray so when you see the execution down in a guy's eye, yeah, man. when you see the that. execution like that, that's what it can be. So hopefully, we when see we more. Step of into, when we step into catch and shoot threes, we can make them. The problem is the offense hasn't created many of those opportunities, and you know it's. And, 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 you know, at times Devontae Green gets catch and shoot opportunities and rushes them. And you can tell the ball's barely on his hand when he shoots it. You know, he just, he wants to get it up so fast. And yeah. when he steps into it and takes his time, he can knock those down as can Rob. Rob showed that today. He made his first three today. Um, Man, he came you know, out with confidence. I mean, that, three or four. Him and that's setting the, the tone like that, it, yep. it just like it, 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 you know, that belief that everybody came into the game with that I was talking about earlier. I mean, it was, it was there, but it was tenuous. And the fact that he was able to step up and knock down shots that it's almost like it let everybody settle into feeling good about things, <laughs> you know, stay Which tuned for a for team the next, like this. Stay tuned know. for the next segment for some words on that. Ooh, um, okay. But no, but I think that, that, uh, yeah, the other, the other big, big stat, six of 12 from three, they didn't take too many. And they made half of their threes. Now, I don't expect them to make half of their threes in every game, but it's a step forward from where we've seen. And it was guys, again, stepping confidently into threes like Rob Finzi. And Rob was catching passes from the interior and hitting shots. I mean, it was it was good on the post guys, too, for finding guys. You know, it was when the double came, they found guys. And Trace Jackson, David, look, if you knock down your threes, you start making threes, other teams are going to be able to double the post. I mean that, and then yep. you've got Trace Jackson Davis one on one, which I'll take that matchup with anybody in this conference, and 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 so again, you start making threes, it opens up huge possibilities for the offense. It opens up driving lanes because guys have to guard out higher. It opens up so the team can't double, or if they are doubling, the double is going to come from further away, which means that there's going to be opportunities for backdoor cuts and all kinds of stuff. You make your threes, it opens everything up. So start consistently making those and start stepping into them as opposed to leaning back and falling away or dribble and step back. I mean, yeah, you'll make one of those every once in a while, but that's not a good three, you know, no. they'll go down occasionally, but nah, man, you got to attack and have that attacking mentality. If you have that attacking mentality, this team can win some games. This team can do some things. Yep. Okay, coming up on the assembly call, we are going to hand out our game balls. We will hit any other lingering storylines uh, from this game, and then we'll look ahead to what's next for Indiana, and then it'll be time for last call. All of that coming on this uh, very happy episode of the assembly call. Stick with us. This is 
Nick Zeisloff, I never miss an open three, and I never miss an episode of The Assembly Call. Talk about a guy who could step into a three. Nick Zeisloff. You are listening to The Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. Catch us live immediately following every IU basketball game, plus every Thursday night at our website, assemblycall.com. While you are there, make sure that you sign up for our free IU Hoops email newsletter. Over 7,000 of your fellow IU fans have subscribed. You can also text IU to 66866 to subscribe to the newsletter. That is IU to 66866. All right, I'm Jared Morris. Ryan Phillips is here with me. We are breaking down Indiana's 12-point victory over Ohio State today. Uh, and it is time now for the game balls. I tell you, Ryan, a lot of these segments, it's been pretty obvious where you're going to go. You could make a legitimate argument for a lot of guys today, and that's how yeah, my this pick. segment should be. It's how this segment should be. Um, so let's go. Who who are you giving your game ball to? I got a Rob Finnessy. I thought that his start of the game made it so Indiana was going to be in it. I think Devontae Green closed, but Rob Finnessy opened the door to a win today, and if Indiana had gotten off to a slow start after the way the uh, Northwestern game went and after all the – stuff about practice and, and all that stuff. I just, I, I don't, I think it could have been easy to get buried. Rob Finnessy came out confident. He led the offense. Uh, he played with a level of maturity that we've seen in the past. And I thought his defense, while his offense kind of waned in the second half, I didn't think it was, I didn't think it was bad. It just kind of, you could tell he was getting tired and he wasn't going to take, you know, step in threes and things like that in the second half. And, you know, of course he was going to be tired. He's, he's, still recovering from that. And also he got hip checked by DJ Carton and apparently kind of, you know, didn't look comfortable walking in and off of the floor. They put him back in the game. Archie pulled him out almost immediately. Cause I think he gave him a look, you know, to, they need to come out. Um, that guy just can't seem to, to catch a break as far as health goes, especially cause that DJ Carton hip check was not called for a foul. But uh, Rob, today, three of four from three, those three threes to start the game were huge. Got the crowd involved, got his teammates confident. Everybody kind of fed off of that. Seven rebounds. I thought he was fantastic on the boards. Uh, Just one assist, but he moved the ball on offense really well. Um, And and he had four steals. And and that was, you know, those steals provide energy. And and he was a plus 17, which led Indiana. I thought he was the best player on the floor all game. I thought Devontae closed well, and, and I think you can make a legitimate argument that he deserved the game ball. But I just thought the way Finnessy started the game and then the way he defended throughout earned it for me. Uh, yeah, Rob is my pick, too, um, because I thought it was so important. We talked earlier about you know the place where Indiana built its lead was the beginning of the first half and the beginning of the second half. That was Rob Finnessy. And so, you know, he, there's, when he's right, and there have been some games where he hasn't really been right recently, but he felt more right today than he's been, uh, and he just settles things down. And when he can actually step up and make shots like that, you know, make early threes in the first half and early three in the second half, it's so, so important. And, and the rebounds and steals were really big. So for me, it's definitely Rob. I agree with you. You could make an argument for Devontae. But I think you, you know, can make he, an argument for Joey Brunk. Too, I think you can make an argument for Joey Brunk uh, as well. You know, and, and the argument for Joey Brunk, again, I think is the one that I made earlier in the meaningful moment section is that when you need someone to step up and just make a, a hustle play, make a this crap stops now play, Joey did his damnedest to try and do that in the first half. You know, and that's the stuff that, that we're getting from him. And his post defense was outstanding all day long in controlling uh, Caleb Wesson. So it's nice. To have a game ball segment where there's lots of guys that you could you know make an argument for uh, instead of just defaulting to Trace Jackson Davis, uh, and I think for this season to become what we think it can become, we're going to need to hear Rob Finnessy's name a lot more in this yep. segment. It's it's just got to be that way, you know. I mean, Devontae is going to be a guy that is going to get you 19 points one game, and other games it's going to be four. You don't quite know. Al Durham is not yet ready to be that guy that's a consistent producer. Hopefully he becomes that, but he's not yet ready now. Rob's got to be the rock on which our backcourt is built. He was that today, despite dealing with some injury issues and not quite being fully back conditioning wise. And it's such a big reason why Indiana won. So I fully concur on Rob. You know, one thing uh, we should mention real quick, you know, when you talk about the rotation, um, you know, Race Thompson, I thought, did enough in the first half that I thought we'd see him a little bit more in the second half, especially when guys got in foul trouble. But yeah, whatever. Archie's decision worked, so I'm not going to quibble. Well, they with ran, it. yeah, and they ran Duran Davis back out there in the second half, which they usually don't do. Right, and I which think and, that, and he earned it too. And he played, yeah, yeah. He and I think that they they liked the matchup of a bigger guy on Wesson. Uh, I thought, and instead of also with Trace Jackson Davis in foul trouble, he didn't guard Wesson. 
much. So I think that that was the the decision there. I think Ray Thompson absolutely earned more playing time. I, you know, I know yeah. I keep saying that, but I thought today was he was really good in his in his. In have his you mentioned time. that before? I think I have. Yeah, a couple times. <laughs> but no, I thought he was really good in his time on the floor. He had a block. He you know grabbed some rebounds. He caused some havoc on when Ohio State was trying to grab rebounds. I. And he knocked down that three, and I loved I loved the attitude he displayed. But you know, I liked that Thompson. No matter how much playing time he gets, more or less, whatever, he comes out with energy in the next game. You know, there's no sulking. And and you know, I, I think Jerome Hunter really earned a lot of playing time today too. But I'd like to see both of those guys get more time. I thought it was interesting. We need to talk about Armand Franklin. That's where I was going to go next. He screwed and, up on defense, and Archie freaked out. Well, he screwed up on defense, out. and he took probably the worst the worst three point shot of the game yep. was the one Armand took off off of one pass. Yep. You know, and so good. You know, Armand is a freshman. There he should be learn. there should be yeah. some games where Armand plays twenty minutes and is really productive, and some games where he plays two minutes. That's what happens with freshmen, and so that's why you know all the talk about. The shortened rotation. Who's you know who's going to be in? Who's going to be out? To me, what always made the most sense is because you have a lot of good players and guys. You know, some guys haven't separated themselves. I think Archie's still going to give guys a chance in the first half to play, and then it's like who's got it today? Who doesn't? That's who we're rolling with. And today, Armand didn't really have it. Probably wasn't a great matchup for him. But tomorrow it might be. You know, the next game it might be just like it was against Notre Dame. <clears throat> But that's I'll how it, that's how it should be. Like the amount of minutes you get should be dependent on what do you have that day. And I, I don't think it's quite been that as much. And so I'm glad Archie was a little bit, you know, a little bit tougher with the rotation today. And and you know, I think Armand's playing time was an example of that. Yeah, and, and I'll say this. I think that that one thing that was very important from Devante, you know, as opposed you know, we're talking about you know Armand and, and the guard rotation. Obviously, you're not taking late, you're not gonna give Armand another chance because Devontae was playing so well and Devontae was winning that game for you. Um, and Finnessy was going to be the second guy to go in, although you know they were kind of holding him back, I think, because of the conditioning issue. But they were going to pull him in. He was going to be the first guy in. Uh, but I'll say this about Devontae. I think that what his most effective thing was, and we just never, we never got to this, was a lot of times when he gets on those where he hits one three, he'll start just chucking. And he only took two, three threes today. He attacked downhill, and he would pump fake the three, and he had that one amazing finish at the at the at the rim where he went. That right was the banner the moment, and that's yeah. why I chose no. it because it was the decision yeah. making. It was the, the decision making was so great, and he did that several times where he got into the lane and did things as opposed to just you know trying to a step back three or or chuck. And he and he had one of those in the first half, and he had another shot from about the elbow in the first half that was just brutal. But you just saw a guy with a more attacking mentality and trying instead of trying to make some pretty kind of circusy crazy thing, he went and finished and 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 I think that and he also you know seven of eleven from the line and he's not a great free throw shooter so again free throws are focus and repetition that's all they are is focus and repetition it's you know a lot of times it's not really about your form because everybody's form is a little different and all this. It's about focus, and he was focused today, and he made big free throws. He missed one of his, you know, he got on a streak of free throws in the second half, and he missed one late. But you know, I mean, you have that attacking mentality, and you're focused. You're going to be a really good player. You know, just bottle that up. You know, it's just so frustrating because you know there's potential there, and and that goes for a lot of the guys on the team. It's you bottle that focus and intensity up, and 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 you attack, attack the other team. Don't let them dictate what you're going to do. You go dictate what you're going to do offensively, and then that bleeds into into defense. You know that guys who are on who are hot offensively usually play pretty well defensively. So, um, I, I just think that it's he's the example of what this team. You know that stretch is what this team should be, and it's it's focus, it's intensity, and it's attack an attacking mindset that they just haven't had at times. Uh, one other guy that I want to talk about real quick, we haven't spent a ton of time on, is Justin Smith, who you know was part of that triumvirate of upperclassmen that were terrible in the first half. Frankly, I mean they they you know they really were Al, it, it, especially in just in terms of production, Al Devonte and Justin, <clears throat> you know who bounced back in the second half. You know, and I think the positive for Justin is certainly the three assists. You know, I think when and, and we mentioned it earlier with that pass that he made to Rob Finnessy for the three, you know, he can get into the lane. His issue has always been ball handling. You know, he would have a lot of ball handling errors, which he's he's fixed some of that this year. His ball handling is still better. Now it's about once he gets in there, what kinds of decisions is he making? And today he made some good ones that created shots for his teammates. That's really good. 
But one thing that I feel like we have got to get rid of, and you know, I don't have the synergy numbers up here, so I can't promise you this. But my hypothesis is that the least efficient, off like consistent offensive possession we see from Indiana is Justin driving in and doing that little jump hook. And I get yeah. it; he can get the shot, but and he's not the making way, them. And he should be making them. I mean, like here's I mean, the thing. When you're that athletic and you can jump over people with a little hook shot like that, you should never miss that shot. I mean, okay, you're gonna miss a couple, but you should never, you shouldn't miss that shot consistently. But and but it, maybe until why, further notice, like put no, it I in agree. your back pocket. I agree. No, <laughs> I, he should put it in his back pocket because the problem is when he goes up, he leans back, and if you lean back and you throw it, you're gonna throw a line drive. It's not gonna spin correctly, and it's gonna be off side to side. When he jumps up, he did it a couple times. I think it was against Northwestern, uh, but he's done it a couple times this year where he goes in, does that, and jumps up confidently over the guy and lays it in is perfect. It's a beautiful shot and it takes advantage of his length and his athleticism and his ability just around the hoop. And, and again, you know, it's so much more effective when he goes off the glass to the, to the, the baseline side, which he did later in the game. And of course, you know, the hook is what set up the fact that he could move to the baseline and go and he got fouled on it. They didn't call it, but it, it, you know, he can finish that way. It's just, when he goes up over the middle, you're right. There's something about it. There's a disconnect, and it's and it's real bad. I'd like to apologize for uh, the lighting on my camera. It yeah, was, I was going to say it was a very overcast day earlier. Now the sun is out, but it's only a two man show, so I can't really leave. And you look go like your forehead it. looks like a screen. Like a- <laughs> no, it's awful. It's it's awful. <laughs> I got to You know, when it's a two man show, I have to like make the call before the show or not. Do I leave it open because the lighting looks better when it's natural? But now the sun came out, and it's it's a little mm. bit crazy. Um, hey man. Look, this was just a, this was a good, solid win. Um, hat tip to Archie Miller for having these guys ready to play. You know, for bouncing back from that Northwestern loss. There is absolutely no reason to go overboard with this and to suggest that this team has turned a corner. We've been here before. Indiana can beat good teams at home. You know, so what Indiana did today is they did what they're supposed to do. And that's good because this hasn't always been a team program recently that has done what they're supposed to do. And Indiana did that today. It's huge. And now when you look ahead, Ryan, and one of the reasons why I thought this game was so important and could be a little bit of an inflection point for this season is you had this game. Okay, it's against a team that was ranked number one at one point earlier this season. You know, so can you can you beat them at home? Indiana did, because now what you have next is two winnable but losable road games at Rutgers, yep. who's been Rutgers great. Rutgers is playing really and well. And at Nebraska. Especially at home. At yeah. Nebraska almost beat us at home, and that's a tough place to play. So it felt to me coming into this game like what India needed to show today was that it learned important lessons from the Northwestern game, that it, it's going to be able to carry on the road in Big Ten play, and today would show us. And I feel a lot more confident that Indiana is going to be able to go on the road and at least get one of those. Got to get one. I mean, you could get both. Like, you know, don't get me wrong, but you got to at least get one of those because you're you going to have to steal. You get one of those, you're feeling, you're feeling real good about yeah, yourself. Yeah, and because you you you're going to have to get a couple road wins. You know, steal yeah. them somewhere. These are the two most winnable. But what you did today, the way that you played today, that's transferable to the road. Like, there was nothing about today that was like, all right, well, you know, we shot 12 of 20 from three-point range at home, and it was an insane game. Indiana just did what they do today better than they've done it, <laughs> you know? So Let's look at the Here's two things to look at right now. Indiana is tied for third in the Big Ten right now, at three and two, which means nothing at this point, but better than being where Ohio State is at one and four in the conference, or Purdue, who's two and three. Uh, against the AP Top 25, they're two and one. Yeah. I mean, they've won some good games now. No, like, I, mean, I mean, we have a resume, you know? <clears throat> it's, not, it's not where we want it to be by any means, but this win... Sort of changes the momentum back to a good thing, and yeah, the the yeah. record is fine. We all would have taken this record thirteen and three, you, of course. Yeah, the it's issue the has way, been how we're playing, but the yeah. way Indiana played today, give me this every game. You play yeah. like this every game, you're gonna lose. You'll some. win. Some, you'll, you'll lose some. Yeah, but but, but you're gonna win more than you lose. Yep. You know, so bottle that, and and you're gonna be in good shape. Um, so the next game, the Rutgers game, is Wednesday. Um. So we, I don't know if we're going to have Banner Monday uh, this week. Probably not. So the next time that we talk to you probably will be that Wednesday game against Rutgers. And then well, you're acing me out of Banner Monday, huh? Well, I, just don't, I don't know that I can do it anymore. I, uh, my schedule's kind of changed, and I don't know that I can do the afternoons anymore. Um, so I'm just, it, it's, it's one of those things that'll just have to be kind of a bonus or a surprise. Well, you'll but, have to get, you have to find a way to get the Corsi every. I know. Maybe we'll get him on podcast on the brink this week. Um, so yeah, hey, that's so, not our show. I know, but we're all one. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. We're all we're all one podcasting family here. Mm. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm competitive, damn it. No, <laughs> you're listening uh, to the Assembly Call IE Post Game Show. Uh, remember that because you're an Assembly Call listener, you get 20% off of your entire order at homefieldapparel.com with the promo code ASSEMBLY20. So if you want to get a great deal on the most comfortable and unique IU apparel that you'll find anywhere, go to homefieldapparel.com. Use the promo code ASSEMBLY20 for 20% off your entire order. And we need to, we've, we've got a little bit of news that we want to break. February 8th, after the IU Purdue game, it is confirmed we are going to host a live post game show at Switchyard Brewing. It'll be us and Crimson Cast. We're going to do it together. So Galen and Scott will be there. We'll Super all, group. We'll all be there. Yeah. So we'll, we're going to hustle over as soon as that game is over. Meet us at Switchyard, live post game show, and, you know, we will. And then we'll have the meetup after our, our meetup. Yeah, we'll just hang out there. So come. So that is the meetup. Yeah. And then, you know, who knows where we go after that. But if you are going to be in Bloomington, we would love to meet you, shake your hand. Thank you for being part of this audience. Uh, it's always, you know, look, when we go back to Bloomington, obviously the highlight is going to Assembly Hall, being back there. It's the one time each year we can kind of go back there and relive those memories that we had as kids, or at least that I had as a kid. I know you came to it a little bit later, Ryan. But a very, very, very close second, almost to the point that it's tied, is being able to meet so many of you in person. Yeah. It really is special. It really does every mean a year. Lot, so. That's the reason we do this every year. It's not just to go to a game and hang out. It's it's to to get to meet all of you guys. So everyone, please come out to the meetup. It's the day of the it's after the Purdue game, man. Come to town, even if you don't have tickets. Go to the Purdue, go go to town. It's great buzz when Purdue comes to town. Heck yeah! Um, watch uh, it at Knicks or Switchyard, I guess. Either one. Yeah, wherever you like to, Buffalo's. Hey, all those establishments. We support them all. We support them all. Uh, hey, I think it's time for last call, Ryan. What are your uh, final thoughts on this IU uh, victory? Look, it's a big win. It really is to bounce back after you know everything that was said against that hall, that just horrible performance against Northwestern. To bounce back and 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 play the way they did today, especially especially on defense, and to you know, execute on offenses to see a guy like Devontae Green bounce back, to see a guy like Rob Finnessy play really well. I mean, that was all really good signs for Indiana. As we said, though, now it's not about this game. You can be happy about this game. We are. But it's about how you carry it into the next game. How do you perform when you go play Rutgers? And Rutgers used to be a laughing stock, now a much better team with a really well-coached team, and that they've developed a home court advantage there in in – uh, in Jersey, it's it's we could not play well game. and lose there. Like it's that yeah. kind of team. I mean, now, it, you know? it is that kind of team. And so, how do you carry forward? Do you show up on the road? And do you show up to to play this game? And and you know, let's see. This team has been a bit, a bit schizophrenic over well the last three years, really. But it's been schizophrenic this year. How do you perform? How do you respond to success? Do you improve on it? Do you build on it? Or are you just going to get back into these ways where we don't know what's what to expect from game to game? I hope that this is a team that's finally finding its rudder and finding its way. Um, because if you can win uh, against a ranked team when your best player is only getting six points, there's a hope for that team. And, and they did that today with Trace Jackson Davis being bottled up largely on offense. So really great performance for the guys. They should feel very happy about this, but they need to remember this feeling and what caused this feeling. And it was focus, energy, effort, and 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 just attacking and having an attacking mindset. If you have that, you can win games. And this team certainly can win games. Absolutely. No, just a, a really good performance from Indiana today. I think the feeling that I walked out of this with is I'm just proud of the guys. You know, I'm really proud of the way as a program that they rallied together. And even going back to the final ten minutes of the Northwestern game, I'm proud of them for finding a way to win that game when they had their C minus game, D plus game, and they still found a way to win that, you know, but then to take what went wrong there, you know, and for Archie to kind of understand the pulse of his team, to know that the timing was right now to really tear into him and for guys to bounce back. I mean, you know, the last few days have been, you know, rumors that guys were offered the release from their scholarship and pictures of bad body language. Like, this is not fun to be a fan during you know, during three day stretches like this, no one enjoys this stuff. Although I think there are times when as fans, you have to voice your displeasure and say, Hey, this program that I love that I followed for 35 years, you're not, this is not the standard that I expect, you know? And so I think all of that talk and all of that frustration, all of that ne negativity was totally warranted. And so I'm just, I'm proud that they responded 
to, you know, not that they read any of that stuff, but that they responded to each other and just brought so much more focus and so much more togetherness and so much more enthusiasm today. Man, I can watch a basketball team play with enthusiasm all day long. Even if you're not good enough to win and other teams are better than you, if you're out there playing your best and playing with enthusiasm and playing together, sign me up, man. I am there for you all the time. You know, and that's the frustration fans have had with this team is win or lose. It just hasn't felt right, you know, and today it felt right. And so hopefully, as you said, they can bottle it. They can carry it forward because, yeah, the schedule is tough upcoming. But, you know, you've got, you know, two road games that are winnable, Rutgers and Nebraska. Then you come home for some winnable games against top 15 teams, Michigan State and Maryland. Those are going to be tough, but you can win those games at home. So you've really got an opportunity now to build some momentum. Or you've got an opportunity to piss away the momentum from today and slide back into the ups and downs and the roller coasters and all the nonsense that we've seen. Which direction is this team going to go? This was a great response today, but it's just one day. It's just Saturday. It's just one game. It's got to be a building block. And hopefully it is. And if it is, then it can really be a positive inflection point for this season. And that's certainly what we're all hoping for. And, you know, just it's nice to feel good. Nice to feel good after watching your team play and just w- walk away from it with a totally positive feeling. Well done, Hoosiers. Um, you know, just really proud of the way the guys played today. All right, that's going to do it for us on this edition of the Assembly Call IU Post Game Show. If you want to see us do the show live and be part of the live chat, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash assemblycall. Don't forget to go to assemblycall.com or text IU to 66866 to join our free email newsletter. And special thanks, as always, to our longtime listener, Bob Thompson, who produced much of the music that you hear on the show. And thank you for listening. We will be back to talk IU hoops again with you after IU Rutgers on Wednesday. Until then. Take it from me, Robert Johnson. Keep your elbows in and your eyes on the rim. And go Hoosiers. Thank everybody for coming out. All right. I got to get out of here, folks. Thank you. Here I come. This is Don Sony. I really can't believe you added that to the end. That's hilarious. <laughs> it's it's the perfect ending. Yeah. We needed, you know, it needed three at the end. Yeah, it and that, that really is the perfect ending. Nice little Robert Johnson shout out at the end. Yeah. Okay. Oh man. Yeah. So uh, Rutgers is what thirty three. Ken Palm, and we're thirty four. And we're thirty four. Like yeah, we yeah. really jumped up today. That's you win a top over a top twenty five team. Forty four. I mean, Ohio State's thirty fifth today. Yeah, Ohio State's ranked eleventh. Yeah, the defense jumped believe, up a lot. Uh, yeah, we held them at like point eight something points per possession. Or, yeah, um, but yeah, I one thing that's gonna be interesting to watch though is IU has played two horrendous road games of the Big Ten so far. Those have been their two worst games of the year. How, oh yeah, they weren't that, even competitive. Yeah, no, that's, not at all. Those yeah. were like thirty point losses. I mean, I know they didn't end up that way, but those are basically two thirty point losses, and now they're going on the road again. So, yeah, no, I'm I mean, I think a, a big part of the reason why folks felt, you know, moderately optimistic today is the fact that we were at home. That's a big part of it. Now, yeah. th- I mean, this this team is definitely improve it mode on the road and Rutgers will just bludgeon yeah. you to death if you're not ready for a fight, you know. Yeah. So, hopefully hopefully Indiana is hopefully Rob's healthy. I mean, that's that's obviously a big thing. That guy, man, he just cannot can't catch a break, <laughs> you know, health-wise. By the way, our free throw shooting is down to 229th in the country now, 68.2%. So all those hallelujah drops from the beginning of the year. Yeah. Trace, tra- more of that. Trace is part of it is a big reason. He's leaning back on his free throws a lot. Um, yeah, Devontae's been the line a lot too, which is, you know, he's shoot 63% or something. So he's always a good free throw shooter before this year. This really? year it's yeah, he was I mean What's his career free throw average? It was in the 70s coming in. He's a 70% shooter. Yeah, so I mean, I guess he shot 73.6% last year. So I guess yeah, he's, not, he's um, not that far off. He's 65% this year. Yeah. I think they said in the game it was like 63 this year, but maybe that was including today. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's It's been different, and it's just a lack of confidence. Um, but you've seen Joey not shoot it as well lately. Trace is, is missing him. Again, he's just leaning back. That's a I don't know if that's a fatigue thing or what, but when he leans into his free throw, he makes it every time. Yep. Or at least he's in and out, you know. Whereas if he leans back, it's a line drive off of the back of the rim every time. Um, it's never offline. It's just how the yep. depth. And and Al shoots like eighty five percent, but he missed three today. 
Yeah. So by the way, so you have talked about how Devonte in each of the last three seasons has had like this clear, obvious benching. In two of the three times, he was the Ken Palm MVP the very next game. <laughs> yeah, he did. And the other he, game I, was last year's against Michigan State, where he wasn't the MVP, but he was awesome. You know, 13 points, four assists, made three threes. He was huge. So, yeah. Wh- and the he, guy responds he off, to being was benched. It, was it two years ago where he went off at Ohio State and almost won the game for us? Well, he didn't almost win the game. We, we, I mean, we got blown out in that game. Oh, but did he we? did. I've, he did score 20 dropped points. Dropped like 30. Yeah, it was 20. I, he's, yeah, he was four or five was, from downtown. We, weren't, we, were, never was, in that, yeah. we were never in that okay. game, though. That's, All right. That was over. That game was over in five minutes. Gotcha. That was pretty bad. But that that was the game after the Purdue game where he got benched. Mm-hmm. So he was he was good, but we did not have a shot. All right, All right man. All right, I'm going to see 1917. Ooh, with the family, with uh, Madeline, and my dad. Nice. Let me know how yeah. it is. It just won the uh, the Gold Globe for Best Picture, so it better be good. Oh, did it? Wow. Yeah, everyone I know has seen it, loved it though. So it's awesome. Just so such a cool war movie. Cool. Well, and people don't know much about World War One. You people should study World War One. It's fascinating. Depressing as hell, but fascinating. You should do a history podcast. Yeah. <laughs> who has the time? History. Who has the, who has the time rants. for a pod? Yeah, who, has the high, who, has the, who has the time for a podcast anyway? I'm it's, telling you, history rants with Ryan Phillips. People would listen. <clears throat> uh, I, I bow to Dan Carlin's superior ability. He Hardcore history is one of my favorites. Well, so. it's, I mean, that's phenomenal. It is the best. Do you listen to it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Dan Carlin's it's, I mean, it's long. Each one's like, four hours long but yeah <laughs> yeah you got to listen to him like over the course it's like listening to a who's yeah. hysterics episode actually you got to like you got to listen to it i over listen the course when i travel time. yeah i listen when like on the plane when i travel or when yeah. i'm like uh, if i do instead of going to the gym i'll do like a walk or, like a six mile walk around my neighborhood i'll listen to it then yeah i can knock out like 45 minutes of a good one nice oh. all right guys all right <laughs> have a great saturday everybody that's right Enjoy your weekends. Go watch some football, some NFL playoff football. Should be fun. Yep. See you, everybody.